parents told me it was a beautiful, warm, sunny day in August. Her mother, Margaret Fisher, who was a registered nurse, and her father, J. Paul Fisher, president of Fisher Cheese, brought their first child home to a small house on Runyon Avenue. And soon after, her family moved into their longtime family home at 407 Garfield Avenue. Within six years, three additional children were welcomed into the family, Lillian, John, and Jim. And when Katie was 13 years old, her sister Peggy was born. And she was 16 when her youngest sibling, Sally, arrived. With a, with a full house, Katie and Lil slept in the attic, and the rest of the family shared three bedrooms and one and a half bathrooms in their modest home across the street from Fro Park. As the oldest child in her family, Katie had a great deal of responsibility taking care of her siblings. Living near the park made this job just a little easier as she often took her brothers and sisters to the park to run up and down the hills, play in the woods, and play softball on the diamonds. In the winter, they went sledding down the hills and went ice skating on the pond. And the park would play a significant role in her family life because it was where they gathered for many birthday parties and family picnics over the years. On summer afternoons, Kate would take her siblings on the city bus to the schoonover swimming pool. And her mother's general policy was that the children should be out of the house so that she could get her work done. <laughs> Katie's first job as a child was a grocery rep when she was about 10 years old. She sold and delivered cheese and butter from Fisher Cheese to people in her neighborhood. And later she rode her bike to Graham Ice Cream on South Metcalf Street to get ice cream bars that sell to workers at Westinghouse when they finished their shift. Kate attended Lowell Elementary School and Central Junior High School and then graduated from Lima Central High School in 1949. And Katie met Ted Steepleton at Central High School when he was a senior and she was a junior. However, little did Ted know, he would have to wait a few years to marry the love of his life. After Katie graduated, she wanted to go into a medical field, and she wanted to do something to help people. In the fall of 1949, Kate was pictured on the front page of the Lima News sitting on the steps in front of her Garfield home with her suitcases under the headline, Campus Bound. The caption announced that Kate was ready to leave for Wittenberg University, and at Wittenberg, she would earn a degree in physical education. And she was also proud to be a member of the Gamma Phi Beta sorority. Her Gamma Phi experiences led her to many lifelong friendships and leadership in various activities, even after she left college. After graduation, Kate went to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota to earn a degree in physical therapy. Once Katie graduated from Mayo Clinic, Ted knew he had to act fast, and they were married right here at St. Luke's on September 10, 1955. Their wedding announcement, published in the Lima News, read, Stunning Arrangements of Yellow Chrysanthemums and Gladiola Laguardia Fern and Rhododendron Foliage graced the chancel at St. Luke's Lutheran Church yesterday afternoon for the wedding service that united Miss Catherine Ann Fisher and Theodore S. Eagleton. Catherine looked lovely in her chapel-length gown of nylon, tulle, and chantilly lace. Her sisters and brothers all served as bridesmaids and ushers, and the reception was held at Shawnee Country Club. The Lyman News went on to report that for their trip to Virginia Beach, the new Mrs. Eagleton wore a fall ensemble with a nosegay corsage. <laughs> After they were married, Katie and Ted lived in Hilliard, Ohio for three years, but they eventually returned to Lima, where they lived for over 65 years. In Lima, Kate worked as a physical therapist for the Lima Visiting Nurse Association, the Lima Memorial Hospital, Bluffton Community Hospital, and the Lima Convalescent Home. She also served on the board of directors for the Children's Developmental Center at Lima Memorial for over 50 years. And in addition, Kate served her community 
through donating and volunteering for a number of other causes. She was very active in the PTA while her children were in school, and she was also a member of the Lima Junior Service League and served on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee for the City of Lima. Katie and Ted have three children, Cheryl, Ted, and Kathy, and their first house in Lima was at 822 West State Street, and very close to the Garfield House where Kate grew up. They lived there for 10 years before moving to 1924 West Market Street, where they would live for the next 53 years. Her three children would each have three children of their own, and so far, those nine grandchildren have produced 11 great-grandchildren. Since all three of her children have lived in Lima, her nine grandchildren have the pleasure of being very close to their grandmother, and they will share some of their memories later but it is safe to say that all of them have greatly benefited from having a wonderful grandmother in their lives. One place that holds a special place in the hearts of the Steepleton family is Lakeside, Ohio. Kate first went to Lakeside as a baby and would vacation there with her family every summer. And Ted and Kate continued that tradition with their family as they rented a cottage for two weeks every summer. In the 1970s, Kate and Ted bought a small cottage on Third Street and as the family grew, they bought a larger house on the corner of 4th and Cedar. Kate always enjoyed going to programs, attending seminars, playing shuffleboard or tennis. She volunteered at the Lakeside Hotel Ice Cream Social and helped to bring pickleball courts to Lakeside before anyone had ever heard of pickleball. They spent considerable time in the summers as the years went by, and when their children married, grandchildren visited Lakeside, and Ted Jr., would meet his wife at Lakeside. <laughs> Several grandchildren had their first jobs at Lakeside and spent entire summers there, and now our great grandchildren look forward to visiting the home on Cedar every summer. Kate's favorite pastimes included tennis and walking, bike riding, bridge, table tennis, shuffleboard, and pickleball. She and Ted played tennis together at Westside Swim and Racquet Club and Shawnee Country Club. And apparently, they got along perfectly while competing in mixed doubles. <laughs> she often frustrated her opponents by hitting spin shots and lobs and made hard-hitting players look silly at times. And she loved to play table tennis and still competed at a high level into her 80s. She took her skills to the Senior Olympics, where she competed at the state and national levels. She also used her talents to frustrate her children and grandchildren who thought it would be easy to beat someone as old as she was. And she did the same on the shuffleboard courts at Lakeside, playing well enough to beat anyone in her family, even after she turned 90 years old. Another example of Kate's pursuit of her interests that started at an early age was her excitement when the circus came to Lima. Her father would take her to watch them, set up the tents, and then to the show. She especially liked watching the clowns, who always made her laugh. And as an adult, she started collecting paintings of clowns, and she often went to see the circus in Sarasota, Florida, when she and Ted vacationed there every winter. She and two of her grandchildren, Sarah and Andrew, marched in the Elida Homecoming Parade, dressed as clowns, but it wasn't until 2014, at age 82, that she made it official, attending clown school at the Toby the Clown Foundation in Lake Placid, Florida. Her certificate indicated that Catherine Tweedy Steepleton completed education in the art of clowning with smiles, love, and laughter. Through the years, one constant in Kate's life was her Christian faith. Katie was baptized at the First English Lutheran Church when she was two months old, but she would grow up and become a lifelong member of St. Luke's Evangelical Lutheran Church. In her words, all of my family was baptized and confirmed at St. Luke's. I accepted Jesus Christ into my life when I was 12 years old, and the Fisher family would go on to serve St. Luke's through many years. Kate served on church council and also as a third grade Sunday school teacher, instructing generations of students, including her grandchildren. 
The whole Fisher family would grow over the years, and Kate and her siblings remained close and got together often. The line of families attended church together and regularly took up a large section in the back of St. Luke's. The family would always go out to lunch after church at Frisch's, Ponderosa Steakhouse, or Racks, and Thanksgiving at the YWCA, and later at St. Luke's grew up to 125 attendees in its heyday, with families in Lima, their guests, and travelers from other locations. After Christmas Eve services, the family gathered in the basement at their Garfield home and later moved on to the YWCA, and Santa Claus would always attend and bring oranges and candy canes for everyone who would sit on his lap. Many people remember Katie for so many wonderful qualities, like her smiles, love, and laughter. One Facebook comment stated that her smile could light up a room, and her love of family and her love of God were apparent to everyone who knew her, and she was quick to laugh at a joke, or even make one herself, even in the last few weeks before her passing. While she enjoyed traveling and doing exciting things, she was also very content with many simple things in life. Sitting at her kitchen table on Market Street, relaxing on the porch at Lakeside, enjoying a pool in Sarasota, reading a Bible story to a grandchild, or taking a walk through Grove Park. Her life will not only be remembered for its longevity, but also for the love and happiness she shared with so many others. Theodore Gazelle, also known as Dr. Seuss, says this about memories. Sometimes you will never know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. As Cheryl, Ted, and Kathy chose the memories to share about their mother, that quote makes more and more sense. Things that seem very simple or routine at the time end up being very significant in the lives of people for generations to come. Cheryl, Ted, and Kathy remember their mom for her love of the outdoors and for her active lifestyle. They remember her as being a fun-loving mother who encouraged them to try new things and learn lifelong skills. They remember special times together on vacations and for her love of music. But most of all, they remember her for her deep and abiding Christian faith and for the valuable lessons she passed down to them. Her love of the outdoors certainly came from her own early life growing up near Furrow Park. Ted remembers his mom taking him to Furrow Park to hike the Indian trails, as she called them. Ted said, in my early years, these hikes instilled in me a love of nature. On family vacations, she would love to find the best hiking areas. We would always go out exploring, just like Grandma Fisher would do. Cheryl and Kathy also remember taking major walks in the park in Woodlawn Cemetery with their mom to find leaves or buckeyes. They would bring leaves back from the park and iron them between sheets of wax paper. They also recall her taking them to the park to go sledding or ice skating in the winter and family picnics in the summer. All three children remember their mom as a very active person who loved to take part in many sports and activities. Cheryl remembered that her family played tennis together when she was very young. They encourage her to take lessons, and she appreciates it now because tennis has become a lifelong sport for her. Ted recalls that he and his mom played doubles together in mother and son tennis tournaments, and that they were good enough to come very close to making it to nationals one year. Ted wrote, what a wonderful experience to share with your mom. Ted also credits his lifelong love of skiing to his mom. When he was a junior in high school, his mom wanted to learn how to ski. So she sent them both up for ski lessons at Mad River Mountain, and Ted has never stopped skiing since. The three children also have many cherished memories from growing up with their mom. Cheryl calls her mom taking her to Matthew's drugstore for an ice cream cone or a chocolate phosphate. She would also let her pick out some penny candy out of the glass case. She also remembered setting up carnivals in the garage and driving with games and snacks for all the neighborhood kids and lemonade stand she set up in front of their house on State Street. Her mom was always helpful and encouraging with these projects. Catherine recalls going to Friendly's after school to get some ice cream with her mom, and she also wrote about being picked up for lunch from grade school to go to QB now and again. Cheryl wrote, Mom was always supportive of anything I wanted to try or do. That included sewing lessons at the Lima Mall, cooking and cake decorating classes at the YMCA, and craft classes at the Country Pillar. They took some of those classes together, and she still has some of the projects they made. 
Family vacations were another source of many memories for Cheryl, Ted, and Kathy. They remember special trips to Williamsburg, Virginia, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and Callaway Gardens. They also have very fond memories of spending time with their family at Lakeside. Their Lakeside memories included shuffleboard, tennis, picnics, Hawaiian ice, and just sharing time together sitting on the porch. Kathy shared her memory of mom's favorite treat from the dairy dog, the orange and vanilla soft serve cup. The Meadows in Sarasota, Florida also became a favorite source of memories for the family. Kathy's love of Turtle Beach and CS Key Beach was developed when they spent time growing up there. Kate's love of music created memories for the family as well. She enjoyed music and regularly attended the Lima Symphony Orchestra and Lima Area Concert Band performances. She liked going to the programs at Lakeside as long as they weren't too loud. Even when they discouraged her from doing so, she liked buying the CDs that all of the musical groups were selling after their performances. She loved big band group music from groups like Glenn Miller Band, and it always made her happy when there was a group like that at Lakeside. All three children were encouraged to take piano lessons. Cheryl wrote, we had a piano and an organ in the house on Market Street. Mom won the Woolitzer organ from the TV game show Sale of the Century where she had to compete against two other contestants to guess the price while in an audience in New York City. I am grateful that I learned to play the piano, and I still enjoy doing so today. All three children wrote about the fact that their mom has on the legacy of Christian faith. She was not shy about expressing her beliefs and telling them how important it was for them to continue the tradition. Kathy wrote, Mom would have her Christian radio program every morning on in the kitchen. I would sometimes forget and call during the program, and she would kindly let me know that uh, she would call right back once it was over. She and Dad instilled in all of us a strong faith in God, which we passed down to our children and grandchildren. We went to church and Sunday school every week and enjoyed going to lunch with the Fisher family afterward. Ted wrote, most importantly, Mom taught me to be a loving, kind, and humble person, just like she was. I love her dearly and want to miss her every day. Cheryl wrote, Mom was a caring, kind, and loving mother who was always there for me, and I will miss her dearly. And Kathy added, every time I told her I left her on the phone, she would answer with, love you too, always have, and always will. I'll get there. <laughs> From all these memories, you can clearly see that Cheryl, Ted, and Kathy all recognize the impact that their mother had on their lives. She provided love, laughter, fun experiences and learning. She also set an example for them that they have tried to pass on to their children and grandchildren. This is the hard part. I thought it was going to be okay until now. All right. In closing, Kathy wanted to share the following program. For mom, if roses grow in heaven, Lord, please pick a bunch for me. Place them in my mother's arms and tell her they're for me. Tell her that I love her and miss her. And when she turns to smile, place a kiss upon her cheek. Growing up, she only lived a few blocks away, and we were able to spend a lot of time with her. 
In fact, all of us grandchildren lived close, and we spent every holiday, birthday, and every Sunday at church together growing up. From Christmases at our house, Easter egg hunts in the backyard, sporting events, plays, recitals, Thanksgiving at the Y, Lakeside, and lots of post-church meals, racks, RVs, and QB. Grandma was a big part of those, of those moments. She was always there for us, and we were all really lucky to have those close relationships with her. After reading all the shared memories from nine, nine grandchildren, some major themes came up. And I'm a teacher, so I like to organize these things. <laughs> so I decided to organize them into the three L's. Lima, Lakeside, and love. Her love for us and her love for God. So the first group of core memories that we all have are from our time with her at her house on Martin Street and the different places around Lima. Visits to Grandma's house were always a treat and filled with special moments and memories. When you visited Grandma's house, Visiting Grandma at her house, she was usually sitting at her table going through her mail. And she had a lot of mail. A lot of mail. As you know, that one was like... When you walked in, she would always give you the biggest smile and kiss on the cheek. We always felt special when we were there. Grandma would treat us special and take care of us. She would make us food, maybe a grilled cheese, getting back to those fish and cheese roots. Uh, at least five of the grandchildren all brought up the fact that she would make them special chocolate milkshakes. Now, that's the thing that surprised me the most, is I never got a chocolate milkshake. <laughs> I don't know what was happening, but that must have started after me. I was like, I don't think it's easy, like, chocolate milkshakes. Uh, Grandma's house is where we were first introduced to scary clowns. <laughs> and Elisa, they're there too. They're always watching us. Uh, and also, she had a her room. In all seriousness, she loved clowns, and, and as they said earlier, she even went to clown school when she was in her 80s. And I think just an example of how much fun she liked to have, and how many people go to clown school in their 80s, and, and how much fun she liked to have with her grandkids. Some of the best memories of her life took place at her grandma's for our family Christmas get-togethers and the annual Easter egg hunts, which I, I just remember how much I always look forward to those. She brought us all together and always made sure we had a great time. She was the glue that kept our family together, the families close. She kept the tradition going from her parents and continued the Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve gatherings at the Y in St. Louis. And when we went there, she always wanted to make sure we had a good time. So she would organize ping pong tournaments, talent shows, and she always loved to organize a big game for the little ones on the side. Lima was a place for celebration that Grandma was a part of every single one. She took us out to eat for our birthdays, Many get-togethers at Godfather's Pizza over the years with family. Uh, we celebrated weddings, baptisms, showers, and just about every other thing you could think of. We even celebrated church every Sunday by going out to eat afterwards. If you were smart, you got to wear most here early so you could suggest what restaurant you we went to. A lot of you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, whether it be racks, the old Uncle Alligator meals, or that, QB, Arby's, or if I was lucky, the Golden Corral. <laughs> Grandma, I love the Golden Crow. <laughs> Honestly, it didn't matter where we ate. She helped bring us all together every single week, and that was the, that was the best part. The second L of memories stands for Lakeside. One common theme amongst all of us was the many memories we made with her at Lakeside. Lakeside was a place where we could connect and share special moments. Many of us worked up there, and some of us spent the entire summers up there. I actually spent over a decade working at Lakeside, the entire summers up there. Here are some of the grandchildren's favorite moments at the lake. Grandma would wake up every morning and have her tea and breakfast on a little white table on the porch. This sounds like a really short process, but would sometimes last all morning into lunchtime. <laughs> She'd have a lot of tea at that time, too. She was never in a hurry and had the ability to appreciate the day, relax, and enjoy life. That front porch at Lakeside was a place where all of us spent time with her talking about all the great things in life. Shuffleboard and tennis were big events up at the lake. All of us had been schooled by Grandma on multiple occasions. She was always very competitive and she wanted to win. She definitely wanted to win. One of my fans, I shared this on Facebook, it was one of my favorite memories of her. It happened just a few years ago. Um, when she was, she was struggling to move around a little bit and I decided to take her for a walk around, around the lake in a wheelchair and we stopped at the shuffleboard courts. I'm like, well, we're gonna see if we can try this and play. I was like, well, I'll take it easy on her. 
And we started off and like I was kind of taking it easy and then all of a sudden I realized that was a bad, bad idea. That was a big mistake. And soon enough she ends up beating me in shuffleboard. And I had a few shuffleboard trophies back in the day, not to brag. But um, she ended up beating me. And um, she was smiling. The best part was, uh, was uh, sitting and talking on the bench afterwards. Um, Grandma always took care of us when we worked at the lakeside. She made sure we had lunch. We got back from breaks, um, we were on time, made sure anything we needed anything. And then afterwards, she'd take us out to dinner and for a show's roadhouse, that was my favorite, Jolly Roger or Red Lobster. And she always took care of us up there. Uh, one of the best jobs of the day was working at the Hawaiian Ice Cart. Uh, I kind of missed out on that gravy train. The other, <laughs> the other cousins did that. I was, I was working hard at the hotel, but. Uh, the, uh, the tennis courts, but Hawaiian ice cart was, was a great thing for them. And she, she and Grandpa had a vision for the Hawaiian ice cart, and it would be a great thing for the grandkids to work up there. And what it really was, and although Grandpa was the manager and face of Hawaiian ice, Grandma was the CEO and general manager. <laughs> as busy as things you get sometimes, Grandma always had time for her family. She had a special place in her heart for us grandkids, and in recent years, great grandchildren. Uh, lemonade stands were a rite of passage at Lakeside, and Grandma supported just about all of us in that venture. She would help make the lemonade, get some cookies, and check on us throughout the day. While we worked at the lake, Grandma cared for us, but rightfully so, she didn't always trust us. She would sometimes take the golf cart to go around and look for us. And that was especially true for Julie, Lizzie, and Sarah. Andrew and I were much more trustworthy, and she uh, left us alone. Evenings at Lakeside always meant going to the program. Grandma would always make us go for at least 15 minutes to get some culture. <laughs> Didn't matter what it was, piano, symphony, weird guy playing the flute, Fred Garbo's inflatable theater. That was actually a thing, it really was. Um, later on in life, I think roles reversed and it became kind of the exact opposite. We would make sure Grandma went to the program for at least 15 minutes. And at that point, we had to deduce whether she either fell asleep or it was too loud and she had to go home. But she still really enjoyed us taking over there, taking her over there and seeing it and being with us. And that was, that was a part of what we did there at Lakeside. Um, after the program, it was always a great time to relax and forward to take and talk. Many great conversations with her and with other family members on that porch. Uh, the real action, however, took place at the table with the game of Uno, Phase 10, or her favorite game, Rummy Q. And many of us played Rummy Q with her later on in life, and she was every bit as competitive there as she was on the tennis and shuffleboard board. And I remember she would make me play Rummy Q with her until she won a game. So it got to a point where I'd have to throw the game with Rummy Q. Actually, in case I think I'd really have a hot streak. Um, but she loved to do that. She's always she always loves to have time with us. Uh, and like I said, brought many many good memories with, with her that we will never forget. The third L and the most important set of memories involved the love she had for, for all of her grandchildren and the love she had for God, which I'll talk about at the end. One of the coolest things about reading all these memories from my cousins was seeing how she really had a special and really unique relationship with all nine of her grandchildren. She connected with us all in her own special ways. And as I was reading these memories, there were things that I didn't even realize in the way she connected with my cousin. And so it was neat to be able to see that and uh, see how she had that unique and close relationship with all of us. Um, she certainly did big things with us. Um, she took us to, to places like Gatlinburg and Sarasota and Florida trips and Colorado and Disney World and even, uh, even to California for the Rose Bowl and the Rose Parade, which was an unforgettable memory. These are all amazing memories, but it's the little things that will, will also really stick with us. Things like giving us popsicles after wisdom teeth surgery and taking care of us. Making us laugh and being a little bit too honest when commenting on our outfits. And that was not for the male grandchildren, that was for the female grandchildren. <laughs> and, and the people that we dated and people that we didn't love us. That, should, that honesty is something that always makes us laugh and something we'll remember. Um, picking us up at the Junior Garden Club at Thoreau Park on um, uh, Sunday afternoon. Connecting with us about the power of movement, Pilates. That one was not me, that was family. Uh, not quite into Pilates yet, but maybe someday. Um, 
meeting us, meeting up with us when we were in college, to take us out to lunch and to catch up. Telling us how much she liked our new tattoo. That wasn't me either. That was Jessica. That was a really, that was a really cool thing that Jessica was talking about. She lifted her, lifted her shirt up, and her arm up, and said, "Hey, I really like that new tattoo." That was, that was, that was cool. Um, the uh, playing tennis, pickleball, shuffleboard, board games, spending time with us, just all together, spending time with us, doing those games, sharing stories about Whitmer and all the great times we've had. There. You know, we've got a lot of Whitmer grads here today from our family. Um, Tiger, <laughs> just teaching us, teaching us to love life, talking about what a gorgeous day it is outside, and giving us that infectious laugh that could make us all smile and feel loved. She loved us all very much, and it was obvious. What a wonderful thing that we could say that about all of us grandchildren have that relationship with Grandma. We are so lucky to have had that love and that uniquely special relationship for so long. We will hold on, hold on to it forever. Grandma loved us all very much, and family was one of the most important things in the world to her. She was married to Grandpa for 68 years, and they were together for 75 years. They will forever be K-10. I can't say there's just a lot of, when I had the funeral, I'm going to say there's a lot of people that that was one of the big memories they had. They, they remembered, they remembered, uh, Grandma and Grandpa and K Ted and that license plate and how they're always together. And, um, so that's something that you know will always be there. Um, their love story is incredible. Many of the grandchildren share how much they knew Grandma and Grandpa loved each other. Um, they also loved watching and dance at family weddings. Um, they, especially the jitterbug. And later on, Grandma and Grandpa loved to do that anniversary dance when they got out on the floor and. Uh, but they always liked getting the last one on the floor. That was Grandpa loved getting the last one on the floor. With grandma, that was a, a great sense of pride to him. Um, grandma would do anything for her. And Grandpa, Grandpa, I know uh, you were such a great character for these past few years, and uh, I know how much you loved and appreciated you. She told us that a lot. Uh, grandma would do anything for her family. Her three children, uh, nine grandchildren and even her 11 great-grandchildren. We're also fortunate to have had her with us for 92 great years, and we really should celebrate all of these amazing moments together. In the past few days that reflected on her life, I've had moments of sadness, like in the speech, but even more moments of appreciation and many unforgettable memories. As a matriarch of her family, she set an example for us to follow with their own kids and grandkids in the future. I think if Grandma could tell me what to say today, and she has in the past. She would want me to close with this. She would be extremely proud of all of the grandchildren who talked about her being our, this is a quote from a lot of the grandkids, our spiritual role model. Grandma was a woman of God and worked hard to teach us and strengthen our Christian faith. God would support her, and she made sure there was support to all of us as well. She made sure that we always attended church, and this is something I continue to hold on to today with my family. I think we, and I think many other, others of the Steepleton and Fisher family have also taken up her tradition of showing up fashionably late as well. <laughs> Something many of you may not know is that she taught Sunday school for a really long time. She was my third grade Sunday school teacher, and to this day is one of the best teachers I ever had. She really was a good Sunday school teacher. In her class, I learned the Lord's Prayer, Apostles' Creed, and many Bible verses, and how to dominate the Bible trivia board game. She even brought competitiveness to the Sunday school class. <laughs> Most importantly, I learned the importance of faith and accepting Jesus Christ into my heart. Grandma was at peace towards the end because she knew where she was going. We should take comfort today knowing that she is looking down upon us from heaven above. Her love, wisdom, and strength will stay with us forever and continue to guide us throughout our lives. Speaking for all the grandchildren, Sarah, Julie, Andrew, Lizzie, Christopher, Jessica, Teddy, and Emily, we love you, Grandma. Always have, always will. Isaiah chapter 
chapter 40, 28 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary. And the young will fall exhausted, but those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. A reading from Timothy. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all those who have longed for his appearing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, I'm sure that's a message that Kate 
and the family heard from the pulpit Sunday after Sunday as they came here to St. Luke's. And they brought in here Sunday after Sunday in whatever church they go to now and whatever place that they live. It's a message that's given to us in the sacrament. Bread and wine, body and blood of Christ tells us that same thing. This, this candle that we have is a reminder of the promise given in baptism that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's a reminder that as we've been baptized into his death, we were baptized and received the gift of resurrection. All of that because of Jesus. And today we celebrate the cake is with Jesus. Not that she wasn't with Jesus all the way along. We heard that in the stories. We heard about a loving person, a caring person, an a energetic and competitive person, but also a person most holy in Christ. And today, as our scriptures remind us, she dwells with him. As Jesus died and rose again, so too he ascended into heaven, and there he prepared the place for Cain, a place in which she now abides, face to face with her Lord, whom she worshipped all of her life, whom she believed all of her life, and whom she lifted up to her family all of her life. She is with the Lord in that place that he prepared for her. And it's the same place that he prepares for each one of us. When he says, I go to prepare a place for you, it's not just for Kate, it's for each one of us. Through his death and resurrection and ascension into heaven, he has delivered us from sin and death and the devil. He has broken down the barrier between us and God and raised us up to a place in the heavenly realms. So today, we celebrate. We mourn most certainly, mourn her passing, as we heard the stories and, and felt the tears and the emotions, and we had the laughter of, of her story, of her life, of her relationship with her children and her husband and her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren and her friends and her family. And we remember all of that with sadness and sorrow. But mostly remember that faith that faith that brought her to the church, that brought her family to the church, that brought her to the meal, to the pulpit, to her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, today is about faith, but it's mostly about Jesus. Because Jesus died and rose again that she might not know. Jesus died and rose again that we may have one. And that's a gift given to us. And so today, as we remember Kate, we remember mostly Jesus. His suffering, his death, his resurrection gives us life. Not just now, but always. And as he went and prepared a place where Cain now dwells, so he's prepared a place for each of us to dwell. With him in the heavenly glory, with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. That's the gift. And that's what we celebrate today. As we gather around to give thanks for the life of Cain and for the life that Jesus Christ gives to all of us. In his name and in his glory. Amen. Um.